Hey there, fellow drama addicts and scattered brain K drama lovers. Welcome back to the Focus and Flare podcast for episode four, where we unravel the unresistible world of Korean dramas through the beautifully chaotic lens of ADHD. I'm Mimi, your ADHD navigator and the queen of ADHD chaos, and I'm joined by... Hey, this is Mike. If it's your first time tuning in, I am not new to this, but I'm definitely not true to this. You know, I love watching anything that keep my attention and K-dramas are the perfect solution for that. I have the ability to laugh, I can get my emotions out, and I can escape to something that doesn't remind me of this US of A. So um, I want to make you laugh and hopefully, you know, with this podcast, we can open you up to something different. <laughs> Mimi. It's on you. That's what you came up with. <laughs> In less than three minutes. So buckle up and grab your popcorn. Let's dive into this hilarious adventure together. I wish I could look at you right now. See, now I can't look at you and I can't tell what you're doing. You know what I'm doing. I'm laughing at you. Come I laugh on at you, so this is okay. Laugh at me as I continue to work through <laughs> So how's it going, everybody? Welcome back. We um back for another week, uh, another week's episode. How are you doing, Mike? Oh, I'm tired. Um, right now tired. I'm in Tennessee again, but a different part. Now I'm in <laughs> Nashville. Um, there's nothing but Zaxby's and Takedo Taco Bells and stuff like that where I'm at currently. I think it's Clinton. So I'm like 20 minutes. I of love Zaxby's. I can't believe you complaining about. Well, you don't eat. Well, you don't. I don't Zaxby's. eat chicken. So that's new for you guys. No. I I own, I'm a pescatarian and I try to eat mostly plant based. So I don't really eat fried chicken. Well, I don't eat fried chicken. So there you go. Fair enough. Zaxby's ain't doing Fair nothing enough. for me. I um. I eat me some Zaxby's. I love Zaxby's. Um, but well, yeah, you you're back on the road. You don't even have access to Zaxby's like that. No, I don't have access to Zaxby's. Um, sadly, the one the one Zaxby's that's here is like it's not really that close to my um, house. So, do y'all have like a Zaxby's adjacent type place? It's raising canes, but I'm not no. gonna give my opinion on that. God, tell them. It don't sound appealing. <laughs> I don't. You didn't sound enthused about I'm it. I'm not. I ain't gonna say nothing about no raisin canes. I'm gonna keep my mouth shut just in case some Texans are watching this. I'm. I'm <laughs> not trying to put that target on my back. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna just. No, I don't. I the don't word. Like, who's gonna take you out over some raisin cane slander? Michael, this is Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what more you want me to say. Um, but yeah, if we, we kind of stepped away. From... If they had plenty of Zaxby's, yes, they would understand. Um, but yeah, we're back. Uh, we we did like three episodes last week. Now we're back. We're ready to get back into it. And this week, or today's episode, we are talking about our top four romantic comedies. Uh our top four K drama romantic comedies. Yeah. Um, and I'm pretty excited for this episode. Why? Because I love K drama romantic comedies. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot like that. You kind of hesitated. <laughs> I thought you was gonna say something about we're talking after I had said that. But no, I anyway, wanted to know why this was so excitable to you. You know, I just wanted to know. Well, then let's get into it. Let's talk about what makes for a good romantic comedy. Um, what makes so for a good um, K-drama romantic comedy? Right. So I want everybody in the comments, you know, put in, like, what are your things, like, or at least reply to this TikTok or whatever, however you got to us, you know, comment and tell us what makes a good, you know, romantic comedy for you, because I definitely want to know. Um, everybody's different, and I like getting different perspectives, so comment, say something about them, just let us know what makes a good romantic comedy for you. Yes, and then we're going to be talking about our top four romantic comedies. So let us know if you agree with our list or what your top four is. Um, so for me, I can start off with what makes for a good romantic comedy for me. Um, I really like 
one, obviously it needs to be funny, right? That's that's mm -hmm. obvious. But more importantly, yes, a given. But more importantly, it needs to give me a sense of joy. Like when I sit down to watch a romantic comedy, it's because I need to escape the world. You know, as somebody with ADHD, <laughs> we feel think we're so sensitive to kind of like everything around us. Like we feel everything so deeply. And a, ro a romantic comedy that allows me to just escape the world and not think about the things that are going on in my life. And I can just maladaptive daydream about it all day. Like, I love a good feeling of being able to escape in the joy that is a K-drama. You know what I'm saying? Like, just to be able to, like, I don't know how to put it. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I feel like a therapist is waiting to get you as a, a a client right in the kind like they sit there going like oh she needs me she needs me but no i i'm just playing i do agree with you like i <laughs> definitely want something that can make me just daydream all day especially if i'm having a tough day or if i'm sitting in a meeting and i have to sit and listen to somebody talk that i don't want to listen to talk you know there's nothing like being able to escape to something that's like entertaining I like to manipulate the stories as much as possible. Like I'll create a whole beeline storyline with a whole made up characters <laughs> in it. But like, yeah, I definitely understand what you're saying. Yeah, like just something that allows me like a good escape from reality. And like you said, I can daydream about it, create my own storylines about it. Um, and obviously the comedic timing has to be spot on. Um when you have like a K drama where the people are actually they get comedy and they're actually really funny, like that is just such a win. For me, um, I agree. I feel like all of those are definitely elements that are added to a good romantic comedy. What I like, I think I like the comedy more than the romance. I think romance put in with good comedy uh, takes away a lot of the I'm not a fan of like crass mm -hmm. comedy. Like sometimes I can laugh at them, but like I'm here for the feels. I'm here for the emotions. See, she only likes the happy <laughs> emotions. I like all the emotions. Like I, cause I could put myself into whatever character I want to. So I get out of it like, so for me growing up, I used to, you know, with my neurodivergence, I like to Divergence. analyze everything, overanalyze everything. So the more, what I like about K-dramas is like, one, the storylines are out of this world. They're all over the place. So I like a romantic comedy that doesn't necessarily have like the stereotypical boy meets girl type thing. K-dramas are usually all over the place. So number one, I like the plot and the storyline to be very unique. Um, but I do want the, I still want it to be light. If it has the drama, mm. you know, I don't want it to have the drama of like a, what was that, Doctor Stranger? You know, that's that's a lot. That's a oh, lot. God. I'll still watch it, but that's a lot. You know, I don't need North Korean, <laughs> South Korean spies to be happening in it. But I do like it to be in like a different setting that I've never really paid attention to before because that will allow me to... You know, sometimes I have the ability to like hyper focus on certain things. So like if a storyline is about like a job that I've never really heard of before, you know, that'll make me like one mm -hmm. day I'll just pull up my phone and start looking through to that job or looking through that community or looking through that theme. And that intrigues me. So I like to analyze different scenarios, different characters. And so that's, but I want it to be light and I want it to be very com comedic. So those are the things that I usually look for yes. in a good romantic comedy. Yeah, no, totally. And then for me, another thing that I really, really, really like is that kind of like that unexpected aspect of something that you really, like you said, you never really thought of this being a storyline mm -hmm. before. Um, and then so I'm assuming when you said North Korea and South Korea, I'm gr guessing crash landing on you was not on your list. No, that nothing like that. No, <laughs> no, no. no. And the reason why I do want to let people know, like, I have not seen anywhere near as much, as many um, K-dramas as Mariah. So, like, I re so like put your list down there, too, because if there I want some suggestions, too. Like, what are some of your top rom-coms that kind yes, of align we want with some, what we're we saying? We definitely want some suggestions. Like, say, like, yeah. Mimi, these oh, are for, for sure, you. Please. Mike, these are for you, because I know that you don't like that. <laughs> You know, you know, make sure you put that difference in there because I don't want to be watching stuff that might interest her but don't interest me, you know what I'm saying? So But we but 
we probably gonna watch watch it together yeah. anyway. You know, I did finally watch um the eighth sense. I watched that. Now that's not um that wasn't particularly funny. It was no. good though. Yeah. Um <laughs> but yeah, I did watch that and um so yeah, if you like shows like the eighth sense, um or some of the other dramas that we mentioned on our list, please, please, please let us know. Like, share your suggestions as well. But let's go ahead. Let's jump into our list. I feel like we ran down what we consider a good romantic comedy. Let's go ahead. Let's run down our list. Um, let's start with our number four picks. Mike, do you want to go first? What's your number four top romantic comedy? So I'm going to stick, I'm going to go a little old school to like when I first started getting into them. For me, I picked Flower Boy Ramen Shop. Yeah, that's Okay, what, that's as your number I'm four. Gonna, okay. Number no, four. Flower Boy Ramen Shop. I don't, is that old school? I guess it is old school. I mean, it came out in 2011 and it's one of the first ones I watched. So I think it's pretty, you know, it's, it's 2023, so over a decade that was um i remember you suggested that to me what did what did you like about flower boy ramen shop because it's definitely well, not on my list <laughs> yeah so i feel like i liked it it's it definitely like, not on my list it was one of those classic ones though, that they kind of initially got me into k dramas. like it was something completely different it was one of the first shows where i'm sitting there going like okay wait a minute what who are all these guys? Why are they all in this house? What? Why are they all moving into this girl's ramen shop? Like, what is happening? It was one of those films that really first made me go like so unplausible for me though. That's why I, that that's right there, like, like you said, that's why I like it. She wanted to be a teacher. That's what. How did she get here? But you know, you know what. I did like that aspect of it that she wanted to be a teacher, but I I agree it it. it I guess now that you mention it, it being so unplausible was kind of what made it interesting. But at the same time, I was I I kept saying, "What the hell is going on?" The whole show. That's the part that <laughs> that's the part that kind of threw me off. The whole show. I said, "Where where did this come from? What the hell is going on?" And you know, I love a good laugh. Them characters had me hollering when she found out that boy was a student <laughs> at that school. Oh my God! Who was the one friend? Oh yeah, when, well, not when she found out he was a student at the school. When they she started putting their ages because he said the year he was the year of the what? He was the year of the something, and she was like, and she was like, wait, that's the year of the. She thought it was the other part of it. Because you know, because it's like, it, it's a cycle. So she yeah. thought and she assumed his age until she saw him in that school uniform. <laughs> now that was funny. That so, was funny. I'm gonna give you that. Humor after humor. What after was her way. friend's name? Her the, friend. The um. <sighs> yes, her friend. I don't remember. Oh her. my gosh. I remember her <sighs> name was Indeed. Because she had two Indeed. friends. Yes, she had two friends, but I don't remember the friend's name. It's been a while since we both watched it's, Flower Boy. We watched, watched that pre-pandemic. Yeah, I watched I watched that probably in 2014. So like I watched that a long time ago. And I think I watched it 2018. Yeah, we were 2018, we didn't even know we had 2017 interest at this point. Like we just watched this on our own. <laughs> no, no, I didn't want you suggested Flower Boy Ramen Shop to me. In 2018? Oh. I, didn't know I believe it was 2018, that. yeah. Because I, that was when I was living in Washington. I watched it when I was living in Washington. That's how I know it was well, you know, COVID It was in 2019. So many years up. I was about to say, it was probably, probably yeah, it did. 2018, it really did. yeah, probably. Um, so I'll go now. My number four pick, um, speaking of like... Um, Speaking of like an old school show is Fight for My Way um, with Park Sejun or what is his yeah, name? Park, one. The one, the, the main character from E to One Class. Park, I know Fight he's friends with Tay. Oh, him. Pa yeah, okay, I did say it. Um, I loved that show. One, like 30 something? Yeah, he's 35. 
34. Yeah, yeah, but he he looks great for his age, by the way. Um, but no, I really love that show because one, I love that it was the friends to lovers trope. That's one of my favorite tropes. And I liked how like I just loved how funny the the main female lead was in the show. I liked him in the show and then I loved the second couple they was just so cute but it was such a funny funny show there was so many it was like a cutesy funny show do you know what i'm trying to say like it was it was it was moments that just made me giggle <laughs> so i have not seen that I, and i and i apologize oh for that's that. right you haven't seen no. fight for my way i didn't even think of that Mm-mm. and you never told me to watch so it so we can't even talk about it. it no you could talk about it because i mean like i t- talk about it because me and there's probably somebody else who had convinced me to watch it especially since well, you watched Fight it for My Way is about this um, it's, it's about this They okay so these two friends meet in high school right and so right. you have the two girlfriends and the two guy friends one of the guy friends becomes a fighter and so his his initial fight career doesn't take off but he decides to pursue it again and as he's pursuing his new fighting career the girl that he's friends with is also pursuing she's realizing that she's beginning to develop feelings for him and so that's the best out but i can explain it um without giving too much away but it's it's a really good show like so i said it's that friends the lovers or is trope. It just very like um like romantic and like it is like- funny it's funny it's like really really funny because and it's romantic like it's the perfect romantic comedy it is a romantic comedy and when i say there's a lot of moments that make you kind of giggle those are kind of like the romantic parts but the second couple in the show is really funny too or do you mean like a like which giggle well what i'm saying is there was both moments so if i'm not like laughing laughing i'm probably giggling at how cute it is but Mm -hmm. it has that's why I'm saying it's a romantic comedy because it has those comedy moments and it has those cute, giggly, romantic moments. But it, it's just, it's it's so good. It is a little bit of an older show. I think it came out in 2014, 2015, I want to say. 17. It's, it's pretty Fight old. My Way came out in 2017. Oh, 2017. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, I can say I guess it's not that old school. <laughs> oh wait, so Park Soju no, and is... Choi Woo Sick is in it too? Yes. Hmm. I didn't know. I think that's how they became friends. That makes sense. And then take But it's, it's Yep, 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 yep. After the pair it's a really that. good show. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, but no, sadly, Mike hasn't seen Fight for My Way. I didn't realize you hadn't seen it. I pro- I think mm-hmm. I would have chosen something we could have bounced back and forth on more, but it's okay. I didn't it's on your list. That's one of your shows. If you like Fight for My Way, let me know in the comments. I need somebody I could talk about with that show and because convince me to watch it because I'm so not cute. Convinced. Yeah. Okay. I'm not. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. No, I'm just kidding. I feel like no, I've not heard you of not. Show. You've not said this. I mean, like, I like the cast so far. I mean Choi Woo Shik and Park Sildi. I like both of them. So like hmm. Well go ahead and start. Let's move on. Let's go to three. our number Tell three. Me your number three. You start off with your number three. I just went, I just told you my number four. I you know. Tell me, yeah, your number, tell me three. number three. No, I'm gonna hear your number three. Go ahead. You tell me your number three. I'm gonna tell you my number three after we talk about fine, your number three. Fine, fine. Well, I had to think about it. Okay, so my third one. You got the whole list. It's not in order. Like the only one I knew that was definitely number four was Flyboy Ramen Shop, but the other ones, it just depends on my mood. Um, so I guess okay. I would say my number three would be. 
Hmm. I guess no it pressure. would be don't business mess proposal. this up. Business proposal. Business you. proposal. That, that is three. a good number three pick. That's yeah. a good number three pick. Business proposal. Business that proposal. One, yeah, that one had me laughing. That one had me laughing for a good long time. Now, what I liked about business proposal is not only was it funny all the way through to me, it gave you two couples that you could do. Yes. It had all the elements to me. Matter of fact, I might be telling you what my number two is now I'm thinking about it. Because like I'm remembering the show. But yeah, no, business proposal was really great. So basically, the way that business proposal um, starts out is it's like there's one girl she works for like a restaurant company and then mm-hmm. her other friend she's like well, a, a food manufacturing a food company manufacturing and they company, come up with is, invaded, again, yeah. completely different nothing not normal yes unexpected um, her best friend she's you know uh what's what do they call those one percenters in korea a chable oh yeah she's a chable yeah her best so friend she, is a chable so she has all cut family. off from her family well don't say that part so don't spoil it. Well, that's that's but, in the first episode. Yeah, but it's not. So the whatever. So basically, she has her dad is trying to get her to go on on these dates and try to set her up with another like really rich guy, and so she kind of gets her best friend to go on the dates for her because the yeah. same thing is kind of happening with the guy and his dad. So the main the main character and his dad, his grandfather, excuse me. They're all, cause... they seem in Korea, they seem to have this fascination where the wealthy needs to get married. Like by age 32, every wealthy person needs to be married. Yeah. And I don't know if that's a K drama theme or is that something that really happens? So like, you know, you tell us if you happen to be a part of the culture, let us know. Cause I don't know. I do kind of wonder that, that too now that I think about it. Right. I, I, I'm interested yeah. to know, but I'm not that deep into it. I just heard it and I've seen it from these dramas. It's not that deep for me. It's just very interesting. So basically the two people end up going on a date that are not supposed to be on a date together. And everything mm-hmm. just unfolds from there. So she's lying about who she is. He has no interest in being on this date. And then next thing you know, boom just funny and comedy and even on the episodes where it does get really touchy feely or like you know kind of heart wrenching or even sad at some point it's not long yeah it's maybe an episode if that um i love how she like saved his name in her phone as the uh archaeopteryx like the (laughs) the loud bird and so every time he texts her that bird comes Uh, uh, up like it just never lets up in the comedy which is just something that's really important to me oh my gosh um, the romance parts it still gives you that little giggly moments that like mariah was referring to um and it's again it's different like it's not a storyline of just like boy meets girl you know they went to yeah. high school together you know it's a very different storyline so those are all things that i appreciate it for me, I also found the mom in that show pretty funny as well. The mom and yeah. the the granddad. Um the mom and the the, the, the poor grandpa. girl's mom and the rich guy's granddad, they were both really funny. Um, spend a little bit of time what else talking was about really that good about couple. That? That second couple. That's oh, yeah. Couple. Okay. The second steamy, couple. Yes. It got steamy. Like they wasn't afraid to hold back. Which I was really couple. shocked about. I didn't but think it didn't that. Feel like it, was gonna, it didn't they seem like would, it was going to happen. Like they, they kind of had. Well, I don't want to say they had a one night stand, but they wasn't dating the first time that they got steamy. It and then they did afterwards. And I was like, I was like, oh my God, they're doing that in a K-drama? Look how progressive this show is. And without Come giving on too now. Much, they did not do a traditional Korean, like the way they try to present Korean relationships. It was very not traditional. Like even the way that the, you know, the boyfriend and the girlfriend, like they end up getting together. Like how that story progresses and how it ends is not traditional. And I really like that it wasn't no. like the static, like, oh, this is how a man meets a woman. And like, you know, it, it just was not that. So I really liked that second relationship oh and her cousin i'm not going to give anything away of that but her her cousin and the way that they do the you know they always do like a love triangle the way that they do oh yeah is the, the cousin 
a classic. It's it's they, that's it's the like one who make... does the um. What is that scene? Um, you know I have no chin goo. <laughs> so again, this show is hilarious. No, I have no chin goo. <laughs> you can watch it on that? Netflix, so it's really easy to get it's through. It's only on Netflix. Is it? On, oh, it's a Netflix original. Okay, well there you go. No, I don't think it's a Netflix original. I think you can only find it on Netflix. I'm pretty sure it's, it's not, not on Vicky. Vicky. No. Mm mm. It's yeah, not on some Vicky. of the shows have that um, in but the no. top corner, so it's only on there. Business proposal was one of the shows I suggested to you. Yeah, mm. it was. It was, but she didn't finish it. She didn't finish it, so we watched it together. Unless she lied. Because I, I watched all the way up to episode like. What we watched up to episode thirteen. What else is there to see? There was nothing else to see. She always does this. So if it starts to get to the part where like emotional stuff starts happening, she bows out. I'm here for I, it. I, if I, I feel like I had gotten everything I needed. I had gotten everything I needed. We got to see them be a little couple. I love how he was always coming to her defense. He he was he was prickly in some parts. But other parts, he was a cute romantic boyfriend. And, and that's I, all I needed to see. And one thing that um, I feel like, Mariah, you didn't really point this out. A, a common theme in your romantic comedies, which I actually didn't know I appreciated until you pointed it out, is she loves a strong female lead. Not a dainty lead who's kind of just like, oh no, no. this guy came to say I said that. Like, I think I said that in the show. You might have. I might have zoned out. I'm so sorry. But um. Yeah, that's one of the things. I mean, I'm just going to be honest. If you didn't say it, my bad. But the female lead in this show is not like, you know, weak by any means. So like, even in a lot of no, the No, no insecurities, no none of that. Yeah, that's one of the things that I really appreciate in the, like, again, I like things that are not atypical. So I really liked this proposal. Even if I read like a, a webtoon or a manga or a manhwa, I cannot stand a overly insecure um, character. It just drives me crazy. All that him and Han and, oh, I don't know if they like me or I just happen to see them kiss. <laughs> like, oh, it just drives me crazy. Me, I can't stand that. Can you that. tell me in the audience, what is him and Han? Him and Han is when <laughs> you kind of like dragging your like feet. And, running. and you're just kind of like, oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. The, the complete opposite. Him and Hawes, where you kind of like dragging your feet and woe is me and throwing a pity party. And that's him and Han. All that him and Han. Stop. Stop whining. That's what it is. It's whining. It's the opposite of ripping and running. It's whining. Him and Han. Him and Han. I'm stealing that. I can't stand that. Um, but yeah, let's talk about my number three pick now. Mm-hmm. Um, another show that I recommended, um, True Beauty. True Booty. <laughs> True Beauty is the absolute, it's one of my favorite, it's one of my favorite romantic comedies. It's one of because my favorite dramas, honestly, Number one, <laughs> it's number one, one is Jimmy. Cha-U-Wu. <laughs> Cha Eun-woo, it's it, it was his normal type of character who's like stoic, but it actually showed that he had a funny side to him. Did you know what I'm talking about? Remember that scene where she's like doing her little glow up and she has the mask on and the mask flies off and it hits Cha Eun-woo's character, Suho's, uh, Suho in the face. And the way that Cha Wu acted in that, it was so like, it was his stoic character, but it had like this comedy aspect to it, which I was so not expecting. But anyways, if you haven't seen True Beauty, True Beauty is a webtoon adaptation that's about a girl who is bullied at a school. Um, her father, or she's bullied at a school for obviously being ugly. And her father gambles their money away. Or no, he didn't gamble the money away. What happened? He he he, he got scammed out of the money. Yes. Well, he gambled. He gambled the he money. Got, away. <laughs> he, t- he took that money and, and so, took a risk 
of some guy who flips money with <laughs> an investment or whatever. He stole them people money and ran One off. Those cash apps money scams. That wasn't if his. you if you get <laughs> it was his wife's money and he takes the money and so they lose their house and you know the fancy city and they have to move back to their hometown and while there she decides you know before going back to the school i'm gonna glow up i'm gonna pull myself together what'd you say i said lucky for them because you know it's not ever got two homes (laughs) <laughs> that mother must have been working her so, ass off to get them out of that damn neighborhood, and he took them <laughs> right back. Oh, I understand why she was so mad at him. Right all. back in the same position. I know why she was mad because they had a nice so, apartment, a nice apartment. They had an, a a beautiful place, and so they wind up having to move back. And so before she goes back to before they move back, she has to transfer to a new school, and um, she decides I'm gonna beautify myself before I go to the school, and then hilarity ensues uh starring Cha Ungu um a beautiful 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 girl plays the main character remember when the mom said she had gotten bullied that day and the mom said we're moving back home and you see the scene of her doing this <laughs> I don't even want to I don't even want to just y'all watch that first episode when I tell you it's set that's one of those shows where it's set the home very well she was happy she, the girl who plays um i think what's her name what, in the what, show oh her name is sujin mm. no i thought that was the boy she is sujin. hilarious sujin is the girl that you know is her best friend oh the friend yeah her name uh the was... friend who actually also likes suho too um <sighs> it's so That's funny to me I don't remember I'm calling her that in the show. The girl who plays the main lead is her name is Muga Young. Larry is Muga Young. Muga Young. She is hilarious. Her comedic timing is so she good. Like Germany. she is just a naturally, huh? I said she was born in Germany. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. She's twenty six. I never looked her up before. Oh, she's 26. <laughs> oh, my bad. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, no, but Muga Young, she's, she, her comedic timing is just so spot on. She, she acted so good in that show. So good. So good. And you know, so, you know what I like about that show? Because I started reading some of the webtoon. They did what Marvel does. If they give you the comic, they give you the webtoon, they give you the material, you ain't got to go too far with mm-hmm. it. You ain't got to try to be all DC creative. It's right. And in. another thing, did you know the webtoon um, is based off of my homie, JB? So, um, you can't wait to tell the me. The second male lead, <laughs> huh? You tell me every time. The second male lead is based off of JB from Got Seven. Um, I got say here, so just so you know, but um, yeah. And in the show, he in the show, I feel like they picked a, a great guy. But in the webtoon, it looks like JB. Like it mm-hmm. looks just like JB. And then I think Suho. I believe they said Suho was supposed to be based off of BTS Jin, but. And it also makes sense too because he in in the webtoon he kind of looks like Jin too. And when Jin first debuted, he did have that like they tried to give him that ice kind of look and stuff like that. So it, it does make sense. <laughs> but he's not an ice like. But even Suho in the show is not an ice person. Like mm-hmm. he acts that way, but we see he has a funny side to him, and all the situations they end up in is just hilarious. Just a great show. Great, great, great show. True Beauty. Like I said um, last week, that show was ahead of its time. It's just ahead of its time. Okay. All right. So I guess I'll So go you want to move two, on to number two? Yes. So my number two mm-hmm. is I Married the Anti Fan. So we talked about this a little bit in one of the other podcasts. That one, hilarious. <laughs> 
So Hilarious. It's very different. <laughs> and I think it's what made it very beautiful, like for me, especially for me to put like poetic, is because the reason why I got into like as deep as I am now back into Korean dramas, <sighs> because I probably had stopped watching them for years after like 2015. Like I just really didn't touch them like that. But getting back into get first initially getting into K-pop music because of Mariah and you know my best friend Kevin. So that's what made me go like. Oh, I made, oh, oh. I wow! Like, oh, well, he said, he said it here. He said it here. It's recorded. You hear that, Kevin? It's recorded. There you go, Kevin. Gonna watch this. Good for you. I'm never gonna watch this, Mariah. I'm not saying we've. I, okay, you know what? Let's take a break for a second because we need to get this out here because she always loved to play these little games, Mariah. I already tell you, you're not, you're on a whole different other level when it comes to friendship. Do I got to get, do I got to say what we say? Do I got to say it? You you ain't got to say nothing. You didn't say all you needed to say. Okay, so the what? Yes, I do. So, because apparently I do. So, if, Mariah, if something would have ever happened to me. You got into K-pop if, because of your best some, friend, Kevin. You didn't ever say all Mariah, you needed to say. We both have a pact that we're not going to be able to continue. And you take that hat. Can I tell y'all think. something? Go Can ahead. I tell y'all all the stuff I done done for this man? You oh know, when God. BTS had released those shot glasses, I could have just bought some for myself. I bought him some. This she man here is like in the hyping, done man hyping she concert. Like I bought two of these. So, so he can have some too. No, because you want to talk about your about best friend Kevin. You go ahead. You talk about your best friend Kevin. He always does this. When BTS, we didn't I'm have, no, we didn't have no tickets for BTS. I got an email saying like, hey, we got extra BTS tickets. Do you know this woman did not answer her phone for hours? And I'm like, Mariah, we, we got to get these tickets. We got to get these tickets. She ain't answering. So I said, you know what? I just got this brand new credit card with a really nice limit. I bought both the tickets and said, we going and we're going to figure this out before she ever answered me at all. Do you think I get, you think I get any credit for that? No. I ain't ever called nobody else my best friend. You sat up here in front of the people on the I podcast and you said best your you best know friend. That. You Kevin. know I have many you best friends. Said, but, but you said it in front of me like it was any we moving on. Because we you moving know, on. Because you know, I would never do nothing like that for Kevin. You know that. I don't know Kevin well enough to know that we gonna make it happen. I don't care if we end up both broken up and single over these tickets we going. I, I can't do that with Kevin, but I know I could do that with you because we're closer on a different level. I didn't even like it. Don't even feel right to put a name to what we are. You're you, you're crazy, psychotic. Go ahead, you got into K-pop because no, of your I don't best even friend know how Kevin. How to continue now? Let's end the podcast. Go ahead. <laughs> I married the anti fan. You was talking about your number two. I married the anti fan. This is a perfect segue. So basically, she ends up in a situation because, mind you, me and Mariah wasn't even friends when we first met, and it took us a while to become friends. Years later, we talking about that now. Wow, I am, I am, I am, because this is one of the reasons right here. This is one of the reasons right here. It's not about what you say. It's about your intentions. It's about what you feel. It's about what you mean. And when she, so what I liked about I Married the Anti-Fan is that, first of all, she wasn't even that big of an anti-fan at first. Her life just got ruined because of this dang man. And so basically, these TV producers come up with this idea <clears throat> after she lost everything. Her job, she had lost, like she everything. about to lose her apartment. <laughs> If she no, she actually she lost a uh, Beyonce lost. or her boyfriend. Beyonce, oh fiance, I thought you said Beyonce. So yeah, she lost a lot, and the next thing you know, she gets hit up, and they're like, "Okay, you know what would be a good TV show if we put you in the same place as this idol." So it was idol related, so that was obviously like a good like, mm, 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 mm. okay, I'm I'm down. 
then it just kept like evol- it was just funny after funny after funny funny like funny moments back to back to back we already talked about yeah. one of our favorite scenes which is when she's dressed in a wedding dress it was actually the one of the pictures if you watch it on like netflix is actually i think this is the like picture they put in the background it's just funny dog way hill too again it's super funny it's not a normal tv show because i feel like they don't usually talk about that idol industry type thing um not in that way not in that way and it goes through a couple different things so it's up there yeah you know, I Married the Anti-Fan is so ridiculously funny. And just the conversations we was having around the show, one of the characters, and I think I said this in another episode, one of the characters is a 27-year-old rookie still waiting to debut, debut. And the, I remember just our whole con- conversation around her, like, girl, what is you doing? You 27 years old, you ain't debuted yet. Like, like baby girl, it- hang it up, flat screen. It's done for you. Like we was getting so annoyed with her because that was a show we watched together. Yes, and, and then, then what was um, also annoyed, the guy. Oh my gosh, the scene her. where she. Oh yeah, the guy who was fronting her, and um, what was that one scene where she gave him the vitamins? It was like a setup situation. Do you know what I'm talking about? She gave. She uh-uh. thought she was giving him the vit- vitamins, but it made him sick. Oh, he they was playing. They or played she that thought it was making her. him sin. Yes. Yes. They, they didn't yes, have to do that yes, to her. Yes, they yes. didn't have to do that to her. That made them hate or, her so um, much. The friends in the show was good too. It was it's yes. such a it, it was, was so funny. It was We had so a lot funny. of commentary about that show because even the friend was like the one who wanted to stop being a lawyer so he could be an idol. You wanna what? Like he was like <laughs> yeah. there was a lot of good commentary on or, that. Show. Um, it was a lot of it was a lot of funny stuff. I, I'm trying to think of this one. What was another storyline that had us dying laughing? So oh, I just I can't remember now. But just just a hilarious yeah. show, hilarious show, so funny. And like we said, the one where they was dressed up shooting the intro for the show, and she had that AK-47, and she kept pointing it at him. That had us dying. Oh, in the car, and when they had him in the car, and she uh, actually oh, the car. Uh, See, that's what I was uh, trying to think of. She had. She said, "Yeah, I could drive," and that girl could not drive. <laughs> If you have not seen I Marry the Anti-Fan, please go see. If you have seen it, let us know what you thought of that show. I Mm -hmm. thought it was hilarious. I didn't even think that I would get into it the way I did. Um, Because I had tried to watch it one time before, but I think I sat down with you and watched it. And you was like, no, Mm -hmm. don't give up on it. And we just, and I just, it was just so funny. It was just so funny. Um, For me... My number two K-drama romance, I'm checking our time. Um, My number two romantic comedy is going to actually be My ID is Gangnam Gangnam Beauty. My ID is Gangnam Beauty. You love that. Another Chowton Woo show, but hear me out. Huh? You love that one. (laughs) I, it's about a girl once again, Chow Wu Woo is dating a girl who's supposedly ugly. She gets plastic surgery and um, she gets plastic surgery and she kind of like leaves her old life behind and she meets all these new friends and all this stuff and people can kind of tell that she's had that surgery. Conclusion. Like I didn't even put those, like he does date somebody. That's the second part. I never even thought about that. Um, I don't know. It, it's a good show. Have you seen my ideas, Gangnam Beauty? Mm-hmm. What were some of your favorite moments from it? You have? Yeah. Hello. I, I'm not looking at you to see my your reaction to me. So I'm hello. I, I don't know what you're doing. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Um, yeah, so one of my favorite scenes was actually the scene where uh Umbu's character beats up one of the guys in the toilet stall. That that <laughs> scene had me weak when he beat up one of the bullies in the toilet stall, and I just <laughs> now 
as far as romantic comedies go, it's not the funniest romantic comedy show on my list. Yeah, I'm quiet about um, it because it wasn't like one of my t- like I I I've liked it for Child and Woo, but like it just wasn't up there for me because it was missing. It wasn't super funny to me. It wasn't. It's not the funniest one on my list, but I did want to include it on the list because I I don't think we have another list where it could be on there, and but it is one of those shows that I do go back two. to. <laughs> you got this high up there, so you got to tell me why is it number two? Well, maybe I'll switch. Maybe I'll move <laughs> it to number four. <laughs> maybe I'll move it to. It, it, I mean, Fight for My Way is definitely funnier than My Idea is Gangnam Beauty. Well, True is Beauty your, is well, definitely. I think you like romance, funnier. though. I think the romance in it was very good. So, I mean, that explains why. It is. It, it is. is a romance. It is a romance for sure. Um. And and it is unexpected because the girl is a little bit insecure, but when she, once she finds herself and she develops that confidence, it mm-hmm. takes off. And and that's when it became a favorite show of mine. I, it's one of the few shows that I go back and just rewatch. Oh, well, wow. I have a bunch of shows that I go back and rewatch, but I do go back and I rewatch it. Um, what, what, give me. Like- all right, let's move on to our number. No- I was gonna say, without it being like a spoiler, what is one of the like rewatchable scenes for you? Like, or even if it does spoil it, just what is one of those scenes? I think like, I already said it. That scene where the where fight in the character beats the guy, <laughs> beats the guy up in the bathroom stall. You that just go back and watch that dying fight. laughing. <laughs> Sometimes, yes, I do. <laughs> Sometimes I do. Or um, I really like the one scene, this one episode where he's like, um, he's trying to she's starting to get with the second male lead and he like chases her down he goes to all these batting cages looking for her Mm. um and it's really cute that that scene right there but let's go ahead let's move on to our number one pick i imagine we're gonna spend the most time on these (laughs) ones mike what is your number one number one (laughs) number 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 one is forecasting <laughs> love and weather that show? For and look at you saying the title. When I t- did I say love and weather? The weather show. I, I no, you said forecasting it. love and weather. I, I did used to call it the weather show. Anytime we would get on the phone, and we were like, "Oh, we want to watch you like the weather show." <laughs> and she's get so mad. I said, "I ain't changing it." So, aka the weather show. Now that y'all know. Forecast the love of weather. Forecast it's also a long weather. name. Come on now. You know, how, listen, if you beautiful like we are, that means you know that we tend to change the names of stuff. Like, we don't call it House of the Dragons. We call it House of Dragons. So I didn't call yeah. it Forecast the Love of Weather. It's the weather show. The what? The K-drama weather <laughs> okay. show. Okay, anyway, Mike, go ahead. Let's no, talk about it. Because okay. it okay. is one of my favorites, too. I chant like it got all the elements I be talking about. I got the comedy, Chef comedy. Kiss. It's high up there. The romance, romance, is not common. First of all, there's an age gap. I'm not gonna tell you no more about it. There's an age gap. The lead, yeah, there's an actress, age gap, but it's not a crazy age it's gap. Not it's like I think it's less than nine years. Yeah, it's oof, when you say it out loud. Um, it's it's not unethical, but. First, the how their relationship gets starts, it's wild. Number like the yeah, no, lead actress is episode. vivacious. Like she's vivacious, she's... gorgeous, funny. Mm. Dressing. Dressing. Dress, the way that she's... Dressed down. <laughs> dressed all the way down. And I like how she, like, she, something really bad happens to her in the very first episode. I'm, I'm going to try my best. This is my favorite. I don't want to give any spoilers. Um, something bad happens to her. I think when you I can tell say. you she picks herself up, it is pretty bad. Um, no, I'm know. saying, I think you can say without it being a spoiler, because it, it I, does happen in the first episode. Okay, it's not a spoiler. True. Okay, okay. Well, basically, mm-hmm. she ends up lose, like, losing her fiancé. He breaks up with her. And yeah, he well, she, she walks in on him, him having cheating. an affair on her. 
I was trying not to go so deep. I know it's the first episode. I know. But I just, I want you guys to experience it the way I experienced it. I did not know what was going, how she was going to know that her marriage was going to break up. I didn't know. So I didn't want you guys to know. But anyways, so she she walks in and sees that. She doesn't stay down. You know, you would imagine Mm-mm. if you see something like that and you go through something like that, you stay down for episode after episode, after episode, especially other K-dramas like that. But when I tell you she is a boss and she picked herself up, she knows where to put onus on it. You know, Ooh, she even takes a little bit boy. of onus on herself at certain points, you know. And then out, even outside of the romance piece, the romance that she has and even the conflict that happens within the romance, it's not like, you know, you would think that so the main male character he ends up have he has family drama, Song which Kane. comes up late, later Kane. on he, in the he's show. In the show, and instead of the drama, usually that's one of those things that K dramas will use that element to say like, oh, this is going to cause a huge rift within the relationship. It doesn't. The r- huge rift in the relationship is actually something that would happen in anybody's relationship. Like, it's not. It doesn't do this huge like K drama twist. So. But what I also like about it, about it being completely different, and I kind of hinted to this when I was talking about my top shows, the element of like a different scene, a different environment. It's about a freaking weather forecasting network. I, when I tell you the most I knew about meteorology and all the things that went into it was some guy getting some report and or woman or person and they just recording off a teleprompter and the news and they film it right there. When I tell you this show goes in so in depth and I started Googling different jobs within, you know, forecasting. So a lot of, they actually like take a lot of factual things. Of course, they put like a huge, like dramatic flair into it. It's a K drama, but also a drama in general. But, like, there's so many things that go into predicting the weather. And, you know, they really play onto that, especially from a Korean aspect. And how they take that storyline of a bunch of weather forecasters and intertwine with it with drama, romance, conflict. You forget that... Like and when I tell you there were certain episodes me and Mariah was watching it and we'd be like we are literally standing on the edge of our bed or seat over some rain. Like when I well, tell you that I show, talk about the comedic aspect of it because okay, that episode you know, where yeah. he, where the ex fiance is trying to chase her down and he's getting into all these hijinks trying to find her. It was that episode was too much, and he wound up being late. You gotta go watch the show to see, oh my but gosh. it was so funny. Um, and or when um when she has her coworkers who have to come live with her, and one of the coworkers oh. is not catching the hint that they want some alone time. <laughs> and then I was. The- Laughing. The interaction between the sister and her love interest, who I won't get into. Oh yes, that is hilarious. The conversation that she um, oh, what was the part that really got me? That went the interactions between the main lead and one of the older um, like senior reps who are there. That's hilarious. Yeah, yep. yep. Perfect... Those two, those two are funny because they has... both got kicked out. Of... They both are homeless. <laughs> So it <laughs> you gotta into, do watch the show. You gotta so watch good. it. Definitely goes into a lot of different the chemistry, of comedy, the comedy, oh, even, the chemistry between the, the actors, romance, the storytelling. It's a it checks the so box good. in my entire list of all the things that I'm looking for in a in a K drama. It's but for a, for a romance. I could definitely, I definitely can see that being a number one. Uh, romantic comedy for sure for sure I could see that being a number one romantic comedy and I think it would be a number one on it would it's one of those shows that will make it onto a bunch of people's list it's not polarizing and it's not you one of those shows that you would think to even stop that show. to watch I wouldn't think to put play yeah. on that yeah, so, I, I think I, you know me, I look at the title of a show and I always say if it has a goofy title, that means it's going to be a good show. <laughs> you know how I feel about that. Yeah, when I tell you, I did not think. If it has a weird, movie. goofy title, it's going to be a good, sh- good show. Um, Let's move on to your number so one. So for me, 
well, before I give my number one, I do want to oh, give okay. an honorable mention to extraordinary, uh, uh, extraordinary attorney Wu. Okay. Hilarious. But it did, it has some controversy in it. So I did not want to put it on my list because it was, it's a little bit controversial, but extraordinary attorney Wu, if it did not have the autism situation where I know some people in the autistic community were a little bit offended by the show. It would mm-hmm. have, I would have not even put out my ideas Gangnam Beauty. I would have put Extraordinary <laughs> Wu. Um, Extraordinary Attorney Wu. Um, but I know some people had some issues with that show, so I didn't put it on the list. But honorable mention to that show because there are so many scenes where I would just go and rewind it like five times. But my oh, number one scene. Korean what you say? That prayer scene when it was in that temple. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that prayer scene when they was in the temple and she was talking about some my Christian name is Jenny. Um <laughs> that was hilarious. But I like I said, I would that would have been on my list. But I know some people had some issues with that show, so I, I didn't put it on my list. Not trying to be too problematic. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to be problematic. Um, but number one show, hands down. If there was ever a romantic comedy that I wish I could wipe from my memory and watch it from the <laughs> beginning all over again, brand new experience. If there was ever a show, or ever a romantic comedy that I wish I could redo, it would be. Strong woman do bong soon. That ain't best, yeah, best Korean romantic comedy I have ever watched. The laughs don't stop. <laughs> the laughs do not stop at all in that show. It every scene has some sort of a funny element. The cute romantic giggly moments are there. The strong female lead. The um and and I love that the male lead falls first. Like he's the one who falls first, and he falls so hard. So, strong woman Dubong Soon is about a girl who her family has like this blessing on them, where all the women in the family are strong, but like inhumanly strong insanely like strong wonder woman and strong. um yeah like wonder woman strong and but the issue is that they have to use their strength to help others they have to use it for good and so um this rich table type of dude he owns like a video game company he is saved twice by this strong woman and he's like looking for her and he thinks he's found her um, this one time that he gets saved from these, uh, this gang of like do batters. And so, um, do batters. I, I'm not very good at avoiding spoilers, but I'll try to avoid spo- spoilers. If you have not seen Strong Woman Do Bung Soon, definitely go see it. It's so, 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 so funny. Um, and like I said, I love that the male lead falls first and he is so like not shy about how he feels about her. And it's just so cute and cuddly. Without I don't know what else to say about like, the show. No, it's, it <laughs> so is, what I, it's not even like very simpy either. Like it's literally just very honest. It's very funny. It does not let yes. up. Even from the very first episode when it's like, is she really strong? And it's like, put on that helmet. Why do I need a helmet? <laughs> Put on the helmet. Helmet. Was she this, this girl that is man. strong. Clean across the Playing her. that Bro. chicken game. <laughs> I couldn't. Or with when with the people, uh, the the gang of people that she beats oh. up in the first episode, and how they acting in the in the police office, talk about stuff. That woman. That's her. <laughs> and when she cut, and when she she just glances at them, and they. They got they start to meet that. I mean, just hilarious. And From it's like that the episode, on. Like, it doesn't have the like. Obviously, it doesn't have like a multi million dollar like you know budget to do like super great cinematics. But it does a great job of doing showing off her super strength uh, and mm-hmm. making it still comedic and still keeping you in like the realm of disbelief. 
you know, like yeah, the still- realm of disbelief, it, and not just that, it also has like this mystery that comes with it. This mm-hmm. guy's like kidnapping women, so there's like this mystery aspect kidnapping. to it. He was murdering people. That thing had me well, scared. He for kidnapped. <laughs> He kidnapped several women. Yeah, he did, but that first woman... Yeah, there was some murderers. There there was some murders, yeah. That part, you know, that's the only thing that snaps you out the funny, you know, cutesy, like, (laughs) like, because I'm sitting there thinking, like, oh, she gonna gonna be safe, she gonna be safe, and all of a sudden, she wasn't. And I was like, oh, Oh, uh, this this snapped me out. But what a good show. If when I tell you that is my number one romantic comedy, I really cannot think of a show that I would put above Strong Woman Do Bong Soon. It might be my number one Korean drama, just period. Oh, wow. Um because if I could just if I could if there was ever a show I could rewatch a thousand and one times, like it's my first time watching it, I would choose that show. I I do not get tired of that show. Um mm. and just what I mean, I don't know what else I could possibly say about that show. It's just so hilarious and it's so cute. Um the cute little nicknames they give each other. When did that come out? Uh, or that scene where they're in the theater. Oh, I don't know when it came out. I feel like it's a little bit older, But too. there's like this... I think it is a little bit older. I know it's pre-pandemic. But that one scene well, where they're in the theater... and got another 2017 on your list. Another 2017. No, 2017. I guess mm-hmm. that was a good year for K-dramas. <laughs> yeah, because that one... I remember that one being like... It was like one of the top suggested when we started watching them together around 2018, 2019. And I was sitting there going like... And we didn't watch We didn't watch it. I didn't watch it till much later. She actually told me, like, Mike, you need to watch it. But it kept popping up for me to watch every time we logged into something. It, it still pops up. Is Anytime you go on a Vicky is one of the top recommendations because it's just that good. It's so funny. If you haven't seen it, please, please, please give it a try. Like I, I, will, I will be the first one to admit I didn't want to give that show a try. But the moment I did, I did not regret it. Every single episode, absolutely hilarious. No unnecessary drama. No waste of your time just every single episode so good so good Ugh. and and the the Che Ball character he's hilarious and super duper duper cute so but we've hit our hour we don't want to hold y'all up anymore <laughs> Michael anything you want to say before we get up out of here well, I just want you guys, again, because I don't watch as many, like, I don't watch as much as I want to watch. And that's because I move off of recommendations, whether it be from Mariah. But now that we're doing this, I want to move off of recommendations from you guys. So comment to me some of y'all's mm-hmm. favorites, you know, your top four rom-coms. I do love rom-coms, especially on a day where it's like, I'm not trying to, you know, have to pay, like, so in-depth attention to something. I just want to laugh and make it light, you know. I love to sit down and watch rom-coms. So put down in the comments, you know, some of your favorite rom-coms, you know, debate with us. If you think that like something that we're saying is ridiculous, I also like to debate. (laughs) So just give me like, just comment with anything that you kind of feel like we may want to watch and just make sure they align towards me if they're for me. And if they're for Mimi, put them towards her because, you know, we're a little bit different, you know what I'm saying? And then after she watches a couple episodes, then she'll say, Michael, stop what you're doing. We're watching these together. Recommendations is how Um, I move. And I will also say that for sure, for sure, remember, um, you never know, one of your recommendations might end up in one of our episodes. So if you have a good recommendation that you think maybe we should recap this show, maybe we should do an episode on this show, you never know, it might actually happen. So do that. Um, And that's a wrap, fellow dramatics. We've reached the end of this laughter-filled episode. But the K-drama and ADHD journey continues. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss a moment of our hilarious adventures. Um, and right now we're only sitting at two subscribers. Our goal is get to is to get to a thousand subscribers. So help us out, please, please, please hit that um, subscribe button. Be sure to like this video. Share your <laughs> share your own uh, romantic comedies, questions, and suggestions. Uh, remember, 
we're in this delightful chaos together until next time keep binge watching keep embracing your beautiful scattered minds keep uh oh i forgot it keep learning keep laughing and keep embracing your focus and flair bye <laughs>